Welcome everyone, 48 Media and 2901 Productions proudly presents to you another round of Absolute and I am Marlon Copeland. What's going on man? <laughs> hey, this your man Eric. Well you were struggling to get through it this week but. <laughs> yeah I, I struggled bad man. I, I did. I did. Yeah, man. So like a Monday or something. Yeah man. And I actually work today, which I don't normally do on Wednesdays. I'm normally off on Wednesdays. But I decided to work today. And I probably shouldn't have. Well, I don't want to say I probably shouldn't have. But I probably won't be working a, on a Wednesday again. You won't work another Wednesday? Nah. <laughs> I ain't working another Wednesday. I'm tired of working. I think I'm going to keep them Wednesdays myself. I'm trying to get my mission test done when I got off work. I ain't had time to do shit. <laughs> Bastard. I had to I had a dude ask me now I'm minding my business doing my station duty that we now have at work okay and doing this shit before I had to go and one of my uh, co-workers walked up and like uh, hey 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 man you know the uh, the FBI was here I was like oh yeah what they want what like then, at the job at the job I don't know. And then he started to tell me why people was up there talking to whoever. I'm just listening, like, all right. So that they came in with badges and had FBI on they on their shirts and their jackets and stuff. And not now, I do believe somebody was up there. I it damn sure wasn't the FBI. But every time this motherfucker tell a story, that shit be so damn all the way extreme. You can't believe shit come out of his mouth. I used to work with this one dude that, and Rashad could tell you, used to work with this one dude at the airport <clears throat> mm-hmm. that no matter what you said, he did the same thing, but it had to be better. Like, he always had to one up. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, you did everything. You did everything everybody else did, but your shit just had to be better. I can't stand when people do that yeah. shit. Like, but you don't want to call them out. I just let folks have their moments, man. <laughs> be like, yeah, man, I, I ain't got cancer oh shit, man you you got this man you I, I had cancer twice in the same place <laughs> bruh no lie <laughs> i can no lie i came off break one day and i was like <laughs> i was like man i put uh my money in the vending machine and i got two bags of chips like sometimes that shit happen yeah this nigga was like oh yeah yeah i got three i was like bruh ain't no machine that damn bad like, <laughs> i was like bruh really you got three bags of chips. When? Today? You like, nah, it was yesterday. I was just like, all right, bro. <laughs> this nigga always had to one up you every time. I just I just let them have it, man. Sometimes you got to, man. You can't give people your energy, man. They don't deserve it. <laughs> Especially by no guy about no damn um <laughs> Clay says you have to call them out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like T.I. said, man, I don't want to put my energy in no lane, nigga. I don't want no lane, nigga, taking mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay, you got to compete over who get the most bags of damn chips. They, they, they right. lame as hell. I don't know, but certain shit just, like, if if he ever heard this, he know what I'm talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, this dude, <laughs> I ain't even, you know what, I, I'm going to just stop right there because if I, if I say what I was about to say, and he heard it. He'll <clears throat> definitely know that I was talking about him. But <laughs> Rashad will tell you, this nigga always had to one up everybody. Fuck him. I don't em. know why. Fuck him. I don't know why. That's what I say. Fuck him. <laughs> 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 What's going on? And for everybody that's listening on the podcast and not uh, our Facebook Live, we are live streaming. So if you hear us talking, to, like just out of the blue, saying some shit, you're probably talking to the folks that's commenting on uh on our Facebook live stream. Tell them you seen Jesus and see what they say. <laughs> oh man, I seen God, man. <laughs> Ain't nobody ever seen him, but I saw him. <laughs> Tell me Jesus, you know, put him on punishment. Hmm. Right, did you hear I <clears throat> now when Boondocks was out, okay. Like I liked the show. Me too. Like, I did too. Uncle Ruckus was pretty funny on the show, but 
uh, this morning was the first time. Was it this morning? Not this morning. It might have been yesterday morning. It was probably the first time I ever heard whoever does the voice of Uncle Ruckus on The Breakfast Club. They okay. had him on there as a guest. And apparently they had him on there because people say that The Breakfast Club is, like, show mostly Democratic views. Like, okay. claim that they're biased. So they had, you know, Uncle Ruckus is, like, he wishes he was white. Correct. So, to him, nothing Donald Trump does is wrong. And it was just some of the shit that he's saying. Like, to take it from a cartoon to, like, an interview on mm. a breakfast club as if he's a real person. A lot of the shit that he was saying was so fucking offensive. It's like, how can you even find it funny at that point? Well, I, I think that sometimes when you 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 have to... I kind of got to say you kind of got to shoot your shot when you when you have the type of uh, platform that the Breakfast Club have and, and what I mean by that is historically they are known for controversial topics uh sometimes they have went too far and they've came back and apologized and things like that so in the genre that they're in they they're going to shoot their shot. Mm. I personally don't think that that's um you know correct to do like because I, I think that politics is kind of like hard to talk about in public platforms politics sexuality uh sexuality is kind of loosening up a little bit just because of the simple fact um you know people are a lot more free to discuss their sexuality nowadays than it was back you know mm. um back maybe 15 years ago uh so i mean i, I give i give them that I'm not saying that it worked because sometimes I, I I think that when you have a show, you have to allow people to express themselves. It can't always just be uh, about what you three think or like us two. It can't always be about what we think. That's why we read what uh, people on the live stream say. No, I'm saying I I get that part. I definitely believe I definitely believe that you have to have like you can't just focus on one point of view you have to tell both sides correct but i think that they were like he took that perspective that he has in the cartoon on the boondocks as that character and brought it to real life mm -hmm. and it just made it, it took it took it from like if you're watching the show you're laughing with the show like yeah you know what i mean it needs it to from, stay in that genre. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't translate yeah. to real life for me. All right, we're using slang now. We're using too much <laughs> slang. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say translate. <laughs> man, hey America, I'm gonna tell you this, man. Sometimes there are people that's gonna make a lot more money than you, and they claim to be more educated than you, and they don't know what the simplest words mean. <laughs> they don't have the innate ability. When when somebody with a college degree tells you that a word that you can find in a dictionary <laughs> is slang because they never heard that <laughs> word before, just let them have it. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> just let them have it. I can't tell you all the particulars because... In radio world and on streaming world, but I was put in a situation where I was, I was, uh, I can't even say what the word was, but I was um, typing up, typing up an important document, and I articulated myself, I thought very well on the document, and someone told me that I was using slang <laughs> on the documentation, and the word was like, I've never heard a hood dude or female use this word ever in life. <laughs> I was I can't even tell you what it is because I, I don't want to get back too far. At least right now I can deny it. I can't deny it. But just know that everybody that make more than you that that don't mean they smart. Hey, I'm <clears> telling <throat> you, when you are able to tell that story, I can't wait. <laughs> oh my god, I man. can't wait, man. Some motherfuckers be going to sleep <laughs> in class, man. Uh. He's definitely right about that. He says Somebody getting just, a degree doesn't equal intelligence. Boy, what you talking about? Because <laughs> I, I show, I, I show, been proving that today. I see, mean, not get today, degrees. But, 
<laughs> look at look at the leaders in this country. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, wherever that line was, he definitely just ran past it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's just now. I've I know that I've said on here that I hate that I'm not. I don't want to say I hate him. That I don't know him personally yeah. to hate him. I think Donald Trump is a piece of trash. So I've said that before, and I don't mind saying that um, again. If I ever met Donald Trump, I would tell him I think he's a piece of trash. You know, even <clears> if somebody <throat> took the same ideas that he had, the same ideas and concepts, and prepackaged them in a different way and delivered them a different way, I think people will be willing to accept it when it's not from him. I don't necessarily know what it could be, but I think just because he's so disliked mm-hmm. that anything he does is going to be, I don't want to hear that shit. I know that's how I feel. Anytime I hear Trump name, I change the station. I don't want to hear shit about this motherfucker. He ain't going to ruin my day. <laughs> I, no, I, I think that the, 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 the stuff that he has said, I think that makes him, like, I don't think it's any kind of way you can repackage or re-image the thought of putting up a wall because you feel like the Mexicans are make or the Mexicans or not just Mexicans, but um, other nationalities Well, the wall is for the Hispanics, but you feel like they're rapists and murderers and all this other stuff. It's like, dude, right. This, <clears throat> this lady said, <laughs> I called him to a radio show and she, she actually said that ever since Donald Trump, became president Mm -hmm. she hasn't been able to have an orgasm (laughs) (laughs) i was like what the hell damn she ain't had an orgasm in three years she ain't had an orgasm since trump been president (laughs) wow three whole years right i was like man that's some funny shit though that is hilarious (laughs) you let somebody affect your life that much (laughs) damn is she trying yeah yeah i don't know i just thought she was funny I saw this um, meme one day. It was this old lady. Well, it actually wasn't a meme. It was an old lady. She had a poster. I think she said, I'm 98 years old, and I've seen, like, seven or eight or nine presidents, whatever she said, and and out of all the presidents, he's the dumbest one. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, damn. said, damn. Damn the wall. What about Flint? Agreed. Hey, leave that to, uh, to Jaden Smith. He taking care of Flint. He shouldn't have to. He definitely shouldn't have to. But if... I corrected uh, myself. I said Hispanic. Didn't I say Hispanic? If an actor can do more mm. for Flint than the the president can, that's, that's a damn shame. I mean, this is the same... This is the same person who said... When the fires, the uh, California fires was happening, this is the same person who said, I am not going to give any more funding to the state of California because the park rangers are not doing their job. Mm. Yep. Like, what the hell are park rangers supposed to do? Walk around and pick up cigarette butts? Bruh. I don't understand that. Like, hey, Yogi, come and help me pick up cigarette butts. Mm. <laughs> so, 80 cartoon reference. <laughs> hey. Oh, my, the demographic, y'all my age, so y'all know what the hell Yogi the Bear is. I was kind of disappointed in that actual the movie that they made about that. <clears throat> stuff. Yogi? Yeah, it wasn't funny. The cartoon was better. You sound like Nixon. President Nixon? You don't like my Donald Trump impersonation? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I don't even know what the hell Nixon sound like. Ain't Richard that, Nixon. Tricky Dick. I said, I am not a crook. I think so. Big nose, mo. He did. <laughs> Big ass nose. Nigga <laughs> <laughs> don't look like a deal, though. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> but if anybody could smell what the rock was kicking, it was him. <laughs> Oh my God! He did a big ass <laughs> no. He did. His name was um. His nickname was Tricky Dick. <laughs> that was the trick. The dick was on his nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, man. Let's get into these. Uh, let's get into these topics. All right. So our topics are a little less well aren't hilarious at all. 
But <laughs> I, <laughs> now I don't want to laugh. I don't want nobody to think that I'm um, that I have a uh, deviant behavior. That, no, that's slang. So, so if any, anybody been paying attention to the news uh, in California today, well, it was I'm looking at the New York Times. So the officers who were charged or who were under investigation for shooting Stephon Clark in his grandmother's backyard because mm. they thought he had a gun and it was actually his cell phone, uh, they aren't going to be charged. So they're not, they're not being, bringing criminal charges against the officers that were involved in that shooting, mm. which is kind of crazy to me because in West Texas, a man is charged with <clears throat> manslaughter in the death of an officer when the officer entered his home now, when I first heard the story, it was said that the officer responded to this guy's home. We're going we gonna to talk about for, R. Kelly, too. Like, we got you. <laughs> <laughs> the officer responded to the home for a burglar alarm. Right. Now, the guy's alarm went off twice. Uh, the guy was in the house. Uh, he said that he thought somebody was trying to break into his home. Mm-hmm. So when they the first broke the story, the it was said in the affidavit that the officer didn't announce himself right into the home unannounced and the man who lived there shot the officer shot in the officer's direction and killed the officer then a couple of hours later they reported on the story again and they had a second affidavit that was saying that the officers approached the home Mm -hmm. walked around searched i mean saw that the front door was open Entered into the house, announced itself. Nobody answered. Then two other police officers showed up, and they heard a noise. And the man in the house shot in the officer's direction. Right. One of the officers outside asked the guy if he was all right, and the guy said, "Yeah." A few seconds later, they heard another noise. The officers on on the ground, face down died so this guy is being charged with manslaughter second degree manslaughter now it could be said that in my opinion if the guy is upstairs thinking somebody is in his home mm-hmm. <clears throat> even if like officers come your alarm's going off you know if you have a, a alarm system in your home and it goes off you know the alarm the people who monitor it they call your house Correct. I mean, they call your house to make sure there ain't shit going on. Right. Now, I don't know what the guy was doing upstairs, if his family was upstairs with him, if he was home alone. Mm-hmm. But if you think somebody's in your house, you think that your life is in danger, you're probably not hearing if these people announce themselves or not. Mm-hmm. All you know is somebody's in your house walking around. Right. You, know, you come downstairs with your pistol and you shoot in the direction of the intruder that you think is the intruder. How is that different from a police officer saying, I fear for my life, and you shoot an unarmed man and killing them, and you don't get charged? There isn't any difference. I just think that for me personally, I'm so desensitized to this stuff now. It's like I'm numb. You know, all I can do is just try to do the best I can to stay six feet above this ground. Try, you know, and that does, that's not always guaranteed because I can I can leave here and be and drive and and get pulled over and get shot. It's something that you always just got to be cognizant of, and it's so sad that as, as black men, when we talk to our children, we have to have not just the birds and the bees talk. We have to literally talk to them about, um, you know, trying to survive, how to act with cops and stuff like that. It's, mm. I'm I'm so numb to it, dude. I, I I feel bad. I grieve for his family. I don't. Well, I'm not grieving like his family, but I do empathize with his family. I sympathize actually with his family because mm-hmm. it's 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 sad um, that especially when justice is not done. Um, and then as far as the guy in Texas, in regards to uh, the police coming into his house, they're always going to look out for themselves, man. Mm-hmm. Like the judicial system are always going to look out for themselves in my personal opinion and i just want to know if the officers had body cams 
because two other officers that were on the scene said that they heard. Isn't the, that okay? If they had body cams, what does that mean? How many times have we seen? You no, know, because I said before that the first story when I first told us uh, when I first broke the story, mm-hmm. the affidavit was saying that the officer in there unannounced or the guy said that the officer in there unannounced but do the body cams have um audio yeah i don't think they do yeah do they, they should have audio i mean that defeats the purpose like if i can see what's going on but i can't hear nothing then is he say she say you know what i mean okay well I, I thought it was just um video i didn't know um yeah i'm just fucking over it man I'm tired yeah, of cause that was that would definitely defeat the purpose cause if I'm sitting here saying <clears throat> I told the guy don't come out of the car put your hands where I can see him or something mm-hmm. like that and he I said I asked him to do it he didn't do it right I mean he said something back to me but if all I have is video and you can't hear any of this stuff then it's who do you believe at that point right it defeats so, the purpose yeah Clay right. says they, they do have audio and video Okay, I I just feel like this. I'm gonna say this, and you can you can take it from there. But I've always thought with police officers, as I have become an adult, <clears throat> I've always thought that there's not enough focus on mental evaluation. There's not enough uh, training, and I and I and I think that for me, I, I personally believe. You can't be a cop for 20 years and be out on the beat for 20 years, like in the streets, because you have to have time out and then time in, you know, admin out on the street out because that's just too much because Mm -hmm. then I can see the mental coming into play. So I just think that more training, more mental evaluation, more frequent mental evaluation, because right now you got people that you can just literally be working at Home Depot and somebody look at you and say, oh, you got a nice bill, man. Like, you ever thought about being a cop? (laughs) And you go, you know, just like when they meet wrestlers and shit, oh, you got a nice Mm -hmm. bill, you know, in the gym. Like, you got a nice bill. You should go to the wrestling school here. Here's the number. You know, they just do that. They go train and do whatever. And if they pass, like, they don't don't even, you know this, like, you train longer to be a firefighter than you do to be a police officer. Damn. I didn't even think about that. It's ridiculous, and you and they really decide the fate of someone's life. Mm. You're saving someone's life. They are deciding the fate of someone's life. It's, it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, I, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's just one of the things that I heard today that kind of irritated me a little bit, had me kind of confused because if. Like, and I don't know the race of the guy who shot the officer, but at this point, it shouldn't even matter. Like, not saying that race doesn't play a part in this type of, in this particular story, because from the intruder's point of view, Mm -hmm. you don't know what this guy looked like. Right. Because, like, he's not responding to you if you did call out to tell him if, if you're in the house. And from... The homeowner's point of view, you don't know what <clears throat> the officer looks like. You you don't even know it's an officer. Right, the lights I mean, are out. Right, so I don't know. Like Dave Chappelle said, spring some crack on. Sad on both ends, man. <laughs> but you had to get that the sadness out. I mean, the, the tragedy out of the way first, so we could lighten up the mood. Well, I, I kept crying ass. Oh, I don't know if he lightens up the mood. <laughs> Shit. I, he is the talk. I, we had a request for it. We was gonna get to get to R. Kelly. Yeah, man. Eh. Right. Like I told Marlon earlier, if I didn't think this motherfucker was a hundred percent guilty at first, after this interview, this nigga like a hundred and fifty percent guilty. <laughs> they gonna throw his ass under the jail. <laughs> I don't think he's I I would be very surprised if R. Kelly gets more than... I, I would be surprised if he gets over five years. I don't see R. Kelly getting... Well, they say he's facing up to 70 years. I don't see that. I don't see it. Tell me. If y'all see it, let me know. I don't see it. I think he's going to get like two or three years. 
don't know, man. Cause he gonna go to jail. Then he gonna come out. He gonna make some more music. Dude, R. Kelly's like fucking fifty two. Hell, how long Ronald Isaac make music? Da, 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 <laughs> da, da, da. Can't tell me he wasn't over fifty when he made Contagious. Of course he was. All right, all right. I was like, like eighty, like know the damn late seventies. Yeah, but I'm saying what I mean by that is. First of all, Ron Osley's career was rejuvenated by R. Kelly. So that means who the hell going to rejuvenate R. Kelly's career? I mean, when you got in trouble last time mm-hmm. and he put out those those records and it seemed like everybody forgot who, I mean, who was helping him then? He was 33 years old. He was young. He was we were the young generation at that time. We were into him. Uh, so you talking about like as like, far as the generation now? Yeah, they're thinking uh, like yeah. Yeah, some of these people. Like, who is this old ass man screaming on TV? <laughs> yeah, ain't nobody stunned his they, ass. They now. probably like, man, he used to be a choir director, <laughs> and sitting, sitting up here tripping. <laughs> they, gonna, they gonna take a part from. <laughs> they gonna take that part from that damn contagious song. Shut up, <laughs> <laughs> man. That shit was. And dude was he he was screaming, man. I think he knows. I think he knows he's going to jail. But I don't think he's gonna do no seventy years though. Nah, that's like one of those. It's like my last, my last plea for, (laughs) for myself before, before they throw the book at me or some shit. I don't know. I I just didn't believe it. I mean, you, you make (laughs) emotional music as a career. Like you know how to tap into people's Ooh, emotions. I don't know that so, that was emotional. I'm trying, <laughs> but you won't let me. <laughs> Absolutely no. Shut up, man. <laughs> got no sympathy for your ass. And Gail sent her that Robert. I got a daughter. Fuck Robert. Robert. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, bitch, well, can't say his this. name. <laughs> I can't say this though. What's that? And I'm on I'm on your team with this one. If my daughter go missing for thirty minutes in the house and I don't know what she's doing, I'm looking. And that's and that's all my point is. Everybody's screaming about R. Kelly going to jail. If if what these these the stories that are out about these kids when they were kids, they parents. Uh, yeah, he is in jail now. We just learned that today. I was shocked. Like, yeah, that's I bet he just support. like. Yeah, he. I guess it was like we gotta give him enough for something. Gotta get him in there for <laughs> something. Get him in there for something. And then we're just gonna leave him. <laughs> they gonna leave him in there to his trial for the other shit. Yeah, he he's um the parents, if R. Kelly goes to jail, I think the parents should go to jail as well. I mean, because I don't understand how in the hell your kids are um disappearing for all this time. Stop talking about Sylvester. <laughs> 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 you tell they, you tell them girls' parents they gotta go to jail to turn straight into soldier boy. Jail, <laughs> jail. <laughs> so then they gonna be if you tell them kids' parents that they gotta go to jail for um um uh, what is it? What I'm gonna say neglect. They gonna be like, well, I don't even know what y'all talking about. Robert was good to them. Yeah, stop using that slang. <laughs> oh, neglect. Uh, <laughs> that slang on this show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, he he know he going he know he going down for something. He knows, and it, and it, there's a difference between you go back 15, 20 years ago, whatever it is. My way, way, way past. <laughs> <laughs> Your way, way, way past. Oh my God! It's like past allegation, present allegations, future allegations. <laughs> Look, man, y'all gonna stop trying double jeopardy, this nigga. <laughs> Man, my boy, man, he ain't my boy, but <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait a minute, this this motherfucker. <laughs> like what I was getting ready to say, he sound like if you go back. <laughs> she, that is hilarious. She had me cracking up last night about that one. <laughs> so, you you talk about when he, like in his thirties when he had the money to control. The interviews that the or the right he can reach out to the right people to say I want you to interview me or whatever. I don't know. Now Any- since he doesn't have that type of money to control the situation, this is a this is a plea of desperation by him. Like he is 
he comes off as very emotionally unstable. He, I mean, this dude. Hell, I thought he was from Chicago because he he had more of a southern draw than I did. <laughs> you said two, three, four, fifty. I didn't do how many. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Going back to his slave roots. I like the suit, though. That suit was dope. I, I like the suit. That probably why his ass locked up now. He should have some raggedy ass suit. Got that expensive ass suit on TV. <laughs> I'm like, you should have sold that shit, paid your child support. It may have been a uh, Steve Harvey suit. Nah, it wasn't big enough. <laughs> <laughs> When, uh, I think the first time I saw the interview, uh, Rashad put that in in uh, the our group thing, and it didn't have the part when he. Um... <laughs> so what age are we talking about, young? Young for him? <laughs> oh, God, oh, damn. <laughs> oh, oh what man. you mean? What you mean, teenager? I was told to ask mm-hmm. you that. <laughs> what age are we talking about? About R. Kelly, you remember when uh, Torrey asked him, "Do you like teenage girl?" He's like, "So what? What <laughs> age?" <laughs> I didn't think it was like guilty. <laughs> like Torrey, I don't, I don't even know why Torrey interviewed. You, you just could have stopped the interview, and it just it should it just should have been a woo. <laughs> <laughs> they should have just came out the corner. <laughs> like some niggas, I like, just come from behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> like, see, we knew he was gonna fuck up today. As soon as he was, as soon as he hear that, he be like, "Well, well, well, <laughs> what the fuck is this?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Yeah, that interview was um, it was the emotion was definitely heightened. Um, he definitely, I, I don't know, he he was just very unstable. And I and and I'm not the biggest Gail fan, but I I applaud her for keeping her composure. Although I do wonder why the hell she kept trying to um, call his name. Like, stop fucking calling his name. He's not listening. Okay. Robert. Robert. <laughs> Robert. Like Robert. Robert. Like shit. They trying to kill me. <laughs> I'm saying, part of what he was saying, like, is like one snippet in that. That shit, I swear that shit sound like part of a song. Talking about when he was like, uh, I'm trying to have a relationship with my kids. Oh, we talking about R. Kelly right now. Michael Jackson, um, um, we we haven't touched on him yet. I think we have different opinions on Michael Jackson. <laughs> Polo Tink Tink. I think that Michael Jackson is a fucking monster, and I've always thought thought that. But um, I, I don't know if I'm offending you, Eric. You know, I love you. You're my favorite director I ever worked with ever in life. But, uh, yeah, I, I always thought Michael Jackson was a monster. Uh, I don't think that EJ thought he was that much of a monster. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, have, I, I still have to watch the and watch it. But I don't know if – I don't know. I don't know if watching the documentary is going to make me change in any way, like – more, I mean, because one dude is dead. What is me disliking him even more gonna change? That's true. Like, so it's like it just seems too extra produced so far. So I, I still have to watch it. To get I thought opinion. it was. I thought they did. A, let's see, Jackson is innocent. LOL. Kelly is a monster. Only one of them has has a tape. <laughs> Shit. Well, <Touché>. Jackson. <laughs> uh, Jackson has uh, facts letters. <laughs> and all I can say is This nigga should not have been homeschooled <laughs> Oh my god There's a there's a part for the people out there uh, In radio world Which I'm pretty sure that It's starting to get out there about um, leaving Neverland There's a part where Michael um, Bought himself a fax machine And he w- I forgot which one of the boys It's two boys But it was one kid that he would fax or either don't talk about MJ on any day. I'm sorry, sweetie. He, he, this is, we got to not, you know, anyway. So there was a, Michael bought a fax machine so he could 
No. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> that clearly just popped up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm I'm just saying he did. I don't know what this I don't know what the documentary is gonna do. I did just read online that like it said people are pulling his music from radio stations across the world. <laughs> But then I pulled it up even more, and it was like some New Zealand shit. I know it ain't America, because I heard this nigga music on the radio a lot today. So I don't know. I don't well, know if I this mean, documentary is really going to change people's mind. He's, I don't know. is dead. Well, I, I think that it's always important for the victims to, uh, if they want to express themselves, I think that's always important. I would never judge judge any victim for that. Now, what comes out of your mouth is up for judgment. And that's with anyone, just like the, this conversation that we're having. It's up for judgment whether mm-hmm. people want to agree or disagree. But um, whenever any victim have the courage to come out and have that conversation, I don't mind that at all. It doesn't bother me. Um, I just okay. So I was saying I ain't get to it. There's a part where in the in the first it's part one. I haven't watched part two yet, but there, in part one, Michael has a fax machine, so he would write the kid a letter every night though he would call him every night but if he didn't get to talk to him he would fax him a letter and <laughs> he can't spell practice <laughs> it was like practice <laughs> you talking about practice <laughs> he it was like okay look i'm not the best at spelling but damn it, if I send somebody something, I'm going to make sure it is spelled correctly. I know that spell check was spell check out back then. Not if you're using a damn fax machine. It's like I know this nigga <laughs> could afford Microsoft Office. <laughs> he said, "Read this to read this to him 30, 30 times. Practice." <laughs> no, it was it wasn't read it to him. He was saying. I think he was saying repeat this to yeah, himself. Re- oh, yeah, repeat this. Boy to repeat something to himself. Something that's supposed to be motivational. How you right? spell he, practice? <laughs> it was P R A T I S E. See, Joe Joe fucked up. Joe should have had them boys in uh in school. How much schooling have you had? <laughs> 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 then he wrote the little little boy another letter. It's like, hey doo doo head. <laughs> That's his version of Hey Big Head. That's what Rashad said. Yeah, so how do they know it came from his fax? His fax machine. Did they analyze his handwriting? The handwriting the handwriting was consistent. Who and did? uh I don't know who did it. it how long it, ago? I don't know. I wasn't there. They a damn show it? one there. Huh. I said they just tested the handwriting. I don't know. How you test the handwriting in the fax? Shit, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just I'm going just by it. I'm <laughs> just going by it what they said. I wasn't there. <laughs> That's the one thing I hate. Who is they? The people from um, <laughs> Leaving Neverland. Boy, that was some crazy shit, though. A lot of... Uh, God, man, a lot of... Um, damn, there's some deep shit came out of that, though, man. I I still have to watch it. I, well, I still have to make myself watch it to have a... So I can have an unbiased opinion. I tell you one goddamn thing. I've never eaten Peter Pan peanut butter ever again. I'm strictly Jif. <laughs> like a motherfucker. <laughs> it's like this motherfucker just fucked up everything. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, Michael. Like that was deep. But anyway, we were talking about R. Kelly, man. So the overly emotional we're gonna get back to Michael probably, but yeah, R. Kelly's overly <clears throat> emotional interview. Let us know what you felt about that. I think it made him look more guilty. That's just my opinion. I don't know how I view the interview. I thought it was funny, but I don't know if it made him look more guilty to me. I just because I already think he's guilty. Yeah. I do think that, like he said, now I, when he say, "I got you locked up in my basement. You got shackles on. You you don't get no food, but I'm gonna let you go buy some shoes by your uncle house." <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's a it's a valid point because it was weird shit like that inside of Surviving R. Kelly where you could not comprehend like what the hell was like there was too many holes in Surviving R. Kelly but you know that's neither here nor there uh, like the interview though uh, it, it made me wonder did like did do you think R. Kelly watched Surviving R. Kelly? Yeah, 
I do. You I do? Think he, I absolutely think he watched it. He probably was laying in the bed. Now, oh, that right, that part right there is not even true. No, that ain't even. No, that, that shit right there true though. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Um, yeah, I gotta work on that part. That's why he got so goddamn <laughs> nervous. I'm gonna get out this shit. Yeah. So, um, it was said that R. Kelly got nervous somewhere on here. Yeah, R. Kelly nerves got bad. <laughs> oh, they got all the way bad. It got all the way bad. He said, "You trying to kill me?" Oh, I gave y'all thirty years. Uh, you lucky if you don't do thirty years. I gave you son of a bitches. I believe I can fly. <laughs> well, you didn't give us stand, and you didn't give us Jesus walks. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't think your credibility on music is gonna help you right now. <laughs> I gave you motherfucker step in the name of the love, and this is how you do me. Step in the name of the love. Is that what I just said? I just <laughs> double jeopardy him. <laughs> well, you going to jail today? Man, yeah, you're in jail, so. what the fuck is double jeopardy? I know what double jeopardy is, but how he R. Kelly took double jeopardy and turned it into a verb. How in the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he, took, he took a noun and made it a verb, like. I don't even know if you can make double jeopardy a verb. There's no way. Cause there are some words that can go from noun to verb, but <laughs> that ain't one that I can think of. I'm not the smartest guy out there. Are there anybody out there? Is there anybody out there that is there a way that you know of talking to a, a live audience? Is there a way that you can turn double jeopardy into a verb? Obviously, I don't know because I use a lot of slang. But I don't think that I don't think that's a um, word that can be turned into a verb. Uh, speaking of Double Jeopardy, that is actually a good movie, though. You know, one of the few mo- movies I can honestly say I like Jennifer Lopez in. <clears throat> yeah, it I wasn't like cheesy. A lot of her movies are cheesy. And there's nothing wrong with cheesy movies. They're just I'm not the biggest fan of them. I will I, do a cheesy movie if you pay me. I have to admit, I like. Cheesy sci-fi movies because I yes, watch Sharknado. <laughs> I watch uh, what did y'all watch the other day with? Um, oh man, Anacondas <laughs> and uh, Anaconda versus Lake Placid or some yeah. shit. I I watch this shit. I think it's funny. No, I like cheesy sci-fi movies. No, I I, I have not gotten my royalty check for the video game, but you you let you let them beat me. Why did why did he beat me? I I should have won. I understand because he's a fighting angel. And, and why a, did you make him light skin? That's color. <laughs> that's colorism. <laughs> that's colorism. No, I, I appreciate him making me a little bit lighter. I was oh, hanging man. out with my um. I was hanging out with some friends um. What Saturday and we was taking pictures and every damn picture I was like midnight. I was offended. Mm-hmm. Are you so, sitting in the shade. No, it, it was at night, but it was like every picture. It looked like I wasn't even there. You gotta stand on the street lights, man. I do. Yeah. Darkness, everybody. Darkness. So I appreciate you, Eric, for making me light. Dark dude, one on one. You gotta learn this shit when you're growing up. I see. I, I, well, yeah, you lighter than me. I think we're the same. Complexion. <laughs> you're a little bit lighter than me. I don't know. Man, did you see all that damn spray paint R. Kelly had in his head? Uh, in an interview Yes that, that Beijing What they call it It was too much never Too much Never too much Like you 52 <laughs> years old Dude I know that your hair Is not that fucking perfect Okay Well I mean It's for TV Now if you walk around Like that every day I'm, But he, I'm sure Every time he's out And about in public He's like that You don't think I think when he got I don't, I don't think this thing Go out in public no more <clears throat> He can't afford it Apparently Well yeah he is broke <laughs> When your net worth is close to my net worth You broke <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah that's the little boy um, Right yeah Yeah that's, that's the little boy that um, Was that, that the We P- looking at a, a laptop screen Sorry about that <laughs> that's, uh, I, I think that's the Peter Pan little boy right there Yeah, And that's the sister that's the sister. Michael Jackson told his dude mom. He asked the he asked the mother, "Can I forgot the boy's name? Can he stay with me for a year?" 
And the lady was like, what? Hey, who asked can you keep their child for a year? Mm. And Michael said, I always get what I want. I'll be like, I'll beat Michael ass. And ain't nothing click in your mind then? Well, they was already, I think they was already starting to have issues, like, or, like, with Michael at the time. Because mm. he was doing, man, this dude, he's very elaborate. He's very, very elaborate. He can't spell practice, but that motherfucker's very elaborate. Like, real talk. He He's, like, that wacko jacko shit people be saying about him. Ain't nothing crazy about him. He's very elaborate. He's so he's so he's so methodical that he may come out like he's like insanely. I don't know. I just don't even know how the worst I'm trying to find. But he's very methodical in his approach to get these. He don't just reel the child in. That's the thing. He reels the entire family in. Like R. Kelly, just like oh fuck your daughter. Come on. Like, this dude is reeling in the whole family. Uh, I'm so protective of my daughter, though, man. I don't, I, and my, it's, it's just hard for me to comprehend how you can let somebody manipulate you into leaving your child with them. Agreed. And you haven't known it. I don't care how famous you are. You still a fucking stranger. Okay, but at the same time, like we talked about off the air. If 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 I had my kid, you had your kid, and we hang and Ti said, "Hey man, y'all come on out here, to, um, you know, to my spot, man, and hang out," and we hanging out with Tip, cause he's somebody that we um both we both um like we relate to him, we relate to him, we like his music, so on and so forth. So we gonna hang with him, and then if Ti be like, "Hey man, y'all go ahead and go on and go on up that way, and uh, I'm gonna go on back here with y'all kid." I'm like, nigga, you, you tripping. <laughs> I'm be like, uh, you serious? <laughs> you said you've been serious since your first album. You lying. Yeah, because yeah, that shit definitely ain't going to fly. Look at that Look, perfect. He missed the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. We looking at a picture of R. Kelly. <laughs> During this interview. So, as I was saying a little bit. <laughs> A little while ago, like he has like the most perfect hair ever in life, and I know it's not like that. So Eric pointed out that he's missing like two spots of hair, and it is very noticeable. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see the whole interview. I'm not even gonna lie, because if it was as entertaining as the rest of that shit that we saw, that was very entertaining. Y'all trying to kill me? I'm fighting for my life. <laughs> hey, beating on this chair like you hit an and one shot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the referee blew the whistle. Mm. Oh. What? Looky, looky. Okay. What you find? Why well, ain't nobody coming after Elvis' ass? He dead. He it, married his 14 year old cousin. Um. Shit, I don't know. <laughs> All I'm saying is, man. But I know people always say El- Elvis slept with his mother. He he's had sex with his mother. Coming out the one dead uh, celebrity, you gotta come out from them all. He's had his trials and tribulations. Keep that same energy. <laughs> oh, that shit out. <laughs> That's what R. Kelly need to do. Keep that same energy. And that same energy that you had in that first interview when you was calm, cool, collected. To my back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't let shit phase you. Today it's a whole different story. Well, I don't want him to keep that same engine in court, and that nigga definitely going to jail. <laughs> like you uh, can't go in. It, it ain't no hope for him. I don't even want this motherfucker to go on. He can't take the stand. He he don't even need to be in the fucking room. Like he don't need to be in the courtroom at all. Cause he gonna be talking to the judge. Like y'all don't need to be doing this to me, judge. I don't understand. I already been on trial for this. This is double jeopardy to me. I don't understand. You, I'm, you fucking killing me, judge. He be like, bailiff, get this nigga out of here. <laughs> I'm trying to get yeah. with Robert Kraft. Get him out of here. <laughs> I'm sorry, but yeah, R. Kelly going. He going. He going to jail. I don't know how much time he gonna do, but he he definitely going to jail this time. I will say this: I will be so surprised if this motherfucker don't do any time. Right? If he don't do no time after this, 
Like they can't say shit else about this dude. I agree. I, I don't want to see another documentary biopic. I don't want to see nothing. And don't wait till that nigga die to bring that shit up again. Like this may even sound crazy to you. If I was even offered to play the role of R. Kelly, which would be the biggest role I've ever had, like if if they you know did a biopic, mm. I would turn that down. You probably be mad at me and look at me like I'm crazy, but I would just turn it down because I would be mad. Cause you'd be like, nigga, you just messed up that money. I, I, <laughs> I, well, I just seen you reenact his interview right here. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got to wait for that shit to come to the big screen. But a I, lifetime. <laughs> I would turn that down because I'm like, it's 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 such a dead horse. If he does not do any jail time, I don't want nobody else to come after him. Matter of fact, if he don't do no jail time, I want him to diss a fucking peer. I want him to go to Florida, live next door to OJ, you know that play golf. Happen. He has to. It's not the same anymore. It's not, but is he broke? It's not even about being broke. It's just he's gonna have to find something to do. His name, his name alone. R. Kelly can do like little Fox Theater. Uh, concerts and stuff he'll make some money like my problem with r kelly is if he gets out of this unscathed that's slang if he gets out of this unscathed what i would like to see happen this motherfucker like go away like don't like disappear like don't oj did else, like ever. when last time you seen oj when last time you heard from oj i don't even know where the hell oj at that's how i want to feel about r kelly yeah, I don't think he gonna. I don't think he's gonna get off. I don't either. I said if he does. But if he does, you all right? I I don't. I don't want to hear shit else about it. I want him to just disappear. But I do think he needs to be locked up. I do too. But there is a possibility. Like I, I feel like he has a seventy five percent chance of going to jail. If Bill Cosby's still in jail, R. Kelly going to jail. <laughs> I'm just saying, cause then he did his shit like without uh, like without a, a jury and shit. He did his what they call that shit. Who R. Kelly? I mean no. uh, Bill Cosby. Yeah. He did a deposition, right? Yeah, well it's just <laughs> sorry. Uh, I don't know how that shit go, but I assume it's not like an official trial. Like you go and you tell your side of the story, you admit your wrongdoings and shit that's like a, that. That's not a dep- deposition. No, I think that, I said I don't know how okay. it, how it's set up, mm-hmm. but. I don't know, but then the dude from Seventh Heaven did the same thing. Dude from Seventh Heaven did the same thing. This and nigga ain't getting no goddamn jail time. But that's because you know, and and here's the thing. Why? Because he was sorry. I'm pretty sure. R, I'm pretty sure R. Kelly was is sorry. He said he he he's sorry for all this pain or whatever, right? Didn't he say something like that? My issue is, and I don't, I, and I know people are probably gonna roast me for this, get upset with me, and that's fine. I'm a big boy. I can take it. But you never seen white people tearing down the dad from Seven Heaven. They just didn't. At the African American community, we roast our own people as soon as we get in trouble. Now, don't get me wrong. I think that with R. Kelly, we all feel like he done did something. Mm-hmm. Michael Jackson, I've always, I mean, since I was a teenager, I've always felt like he's did something. But with that being said, we are black people we are very quick to administer guilt on a person whether it's the um whether it, whether they're innocent or innocent or guilty it doesn't matter and i apologize for using slang when i say administer <laughs> but we it, we 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 do that to each other like like it's nothing and then if a person truly is innocent mm-hmm. it's just like it just goes away like we like we never like really apologize to them or whatever or it, we're just very selective yeah like when we was doing the thing about jail people that should have went to jail mm-hmm. jay-z I, and i like jay-z he fucking walked up to someone because he was mad at them about leaking his music and stabbed them you cannot walk up to somebody and stab the shit out of them. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> you can't, because if I did it, I'm hey, going to jail. Yeah. But I don't see um, Jay-Z, he did not come out of that situation um, repulsed or or uh, shunned by the African-American community. Nope. He went on to make 
Many, many great records. Yeah. Diddy shot people. Or Sean, somebody. One of the two. We know Diddy did it. Diddy did it. Sean took the rap. Well, he was probably just as guilty. But Sean took the rap. And Diddy left him hanging. So we, like, I think as a community, it, it would be better. Like, I, and I know people was critical, was, uh, yeah, was, was very critical of fans, like, doing the GoFundMe account for R. Kelly. Look, if that's what they want to do, that's what they do, they want to do. Would I donate to the uh, GoFundMe account? No. <clears throat> but if that's what they want to do, at least, I just feel like we don't rally around our people. I, that's, what I, that's what I did love about Barack. I felt like it doesn't matter what household you grew up in, where you're any city kid, suburb, suburb kid, whatever. Everyone rallied around Barack. He was like a ray of hope for the African American community, and I love the fact that he was the one thing we rallied around when he was in office and still now. Yeah, because that, that, cause that's not our cousin, that's not our uncle, mm-hmm. that's not our brother. We always rally around people we don't know more than the, the people that we do know. Right. So. Mm-hmm. But I, I just feel like I, I wasn't I wasn't really. Look, I just I just want R. Kelly to the, I wanted to kind of go away, but the interview was hilarious. <clears throat> he looked like a pedophile. <laughs> he looked like that one. Like if you on set with him, you be like, I'm gonna go to my trailer. Like <laughs> <laughs> I ain't eating at the table with that. <clears throat> I was trying to find out what happened to him. I don't think nothing. Nothing. He's just chilling. I don't even think he did um, any um, in and he, jail time. Yeah, I don't think he did in uh, jail time, but he did confess. I remember him confessing. All right. I don't, I don't know. Man. Like, I feel like if Michael Jackson, like hypothetically, I know that's lame, if he was still <laughs> alive, if he admitted what he, like if he admitted that he did, you know, even one of the things that they said he did, I They're feel like with Bill Cosby. But Bill, shit, Bill. Oh, I don't know. I I feel like people would would. I I I, I don't know. I think we would kind of rally around him, which would be wrong because he deserves to go to jail. Yeah. But if he's sitting up here saying he's innocent, I don't think we would rally around him. We would be like, put him in jail. I just think we're backwards as a society. I mean, because you can say innocent until proven guilty, and even if you're proven innocent and people still don't believe that you innocent, <laughs> it ain't going to matter. Right. So. I would like to think that R. Kelly and Jesse belong in the prison with me. <laughs> because I know I put the pill in the pudding, and I think that R. Kelly stepped in the name of the love. <laughs> in the name of the love. <laughs> Dog. And they believe he should be in the prison with that dog. <laughs> hey. I called my wife Camille to get me out of jail. <laughs> Ain't nobody said shit about Bill Cosby since he been locked up. That's and that's my point exactly. But he go he gonna, he gonna do his time. He gonna get it if he survive. <laughs> <laughs> What? I'm oh saying. shit! I killed Bill off. <laughs> I'm just saying, if he survived the time that he got to do in jail, and he get out, like he just gonna, <clears throat> he just, he probably just gonna disappear. You can't kill me. You try, to, you know. I usually don't cuss, but I'm gonna cuss now. You little black motherfucker. You try to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> but man, that's just our opinion <laughs> on the fucked up shit that's going on in our world. Today. A lot of fucked up shit. Well, you know, and it's sensationalized because of the status of these people. Yeah. Yeah, because you ain't getting documentaries about Joe Blow down the street who molest a motherfucker. They just get arrested, mm-hmm. go to trial, get locked up, and ain't nobody said shit else about them. Right. Don't nobody get to so. sit in front of Gail King. Yeah. So, so if you want to hear us talk more shit about random shit, other <laughs> shit that's going on in the day, today's news. We ain't had nobody cooking in the background this time. Nah, not today. <laughs> so, <gasps> if you want to hear more of that, <gasps> like, comment, subscribe. And you can't see my niece behind the camera shooting us the bird. <laughs> well, I just told on you anyway. 
I'm fighting for my fucking life. <laughs> I'm trying to record this podcast. And y'all won't let me. <laughs> Absolutely no. <laughs> but we're going to wrap that up for the night. Until next week. We appreciate y'all for taking the time to listen to another round. Y'all recorded this podcast last week, this week, <laughs> next week. <laughs> Are we going to double jeopardy ourselves? <laughs> I'm talking about the same shit. <laughs> we just double jeopardy the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my right. God. But like I said, like, comment, subscribe. You catch us on Podbean, which is where our podcast is hosted. Another round of Absolute. You can catch it on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify. Probably the TuneIn app. I think it's on there. Yes, now. it is. And probably a gang of other places that I tried to submit it to and don't know if it got accepted got yet because I ain't checked the email. <laughs> <laughs> so I might need to do that. You can follow us on Twitter at ARO Absolute. And you can follow us on Instagram at ARO underscore Absolute. And until next time, we out there. Good night. I got them haters on my right. I got them haters all around and I can't let them stop my life. I'm going to keep rolling, keep rolling.